Greetings, minions. Piddling Z here, and only Piddling Z today. You see, Alonzo normally is wandering around the back of the video somewhere. You usually see his tail or something, but he's always in here in my office with me. Today he will not be, because you see, I always have a drink on me. Like, this is one of my favorite mugs. And he also apparently likes drinking out of a mug because it has tea in it and he decided he was going to stick his whole face in the mug and drink my tea and that is unacceptable behavior. So, no Alonzo today. However, I decided I'm going to answer some of the questions that you guys have asked me <gasps> because you're amazing and I appreciate your questions. If you have other questions that you want me to answer or to delve into at some point in time, just drop them below in the comments because I like to talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. And away we go. One Minion says, uh, best way on, or any advice on getting a beta reader. Now, if you don't know what a beta reader is, uh, you might want to go back and read my vlog on uh, how to get my job. A beta reader basically is a person that will take your manuscript before it is submitted to agents or anything, and they will read it and critique it and give you their basic thoughts, what's not working for them, what is working for them, any ideas that they might have, if you like that kind of beta reader. But that's what a beta reader is. The best way you can find a beta reader is to find other writers. Now, how I found other writers was writer forums, of course, and there are many, many different writer forums out there. I know that Reddit has a writer's group and also one of my absolute favorites, Absolute Writer's Water Cooler, okay? It represents every different genre, answers pretty much every question you could possibly ask, and it's a really great place to hang and get to know more about the industry and to get in touch with other writers and connect because really only writers really understand other writers. So it's a great place to meet people. If you go in there and you're looking for a beta reader, just make sure you're open to being a beta reader yourself kind of a whole tit for tat kind of thing, you know what I mean? You have to be available to your fellow writers if you want them available to you. The next question, did your slump in income have anything to do with your coming out? You're an excellent writer slash author. Thank you, Minion. I hate to even think it did, but as part of the LGBTQ plus community, it's a definite fear and reality that people do discriminate. I can't for certain say that it is. I know the vast majority of my income is not because of that. The vast majority is because I had some contracts canceled because of some business decisions uh, not on my part, and that's fine. That had nothing to do with me coming out. Um, however, I can say, and I, it disturbs me, but I don't know if it's true or not, I can say that as soon as I came out, I stopped getting requests for school visits. And uh, if you know anything about the business of writing, school visits to a, a, a kidlet, which, you know, middle grade teen writer, uh, they're very vital to your income. And I stopped getting invitations. So I don't know if that has anything to do with me coming out. I don't know if it's just, you know, people haven't heard from me in a big way in a long time because I mean, I've had books since Vlad, but they haven't really been really big. So I have no idea. I don't know if I should connect it or, or not. So basically I don't focus on it. Basically I go, you know, if I don't have school visits, I don't have them. That means I have more time to write. Really, you just kind of have to roll with it because haters going to hate. What are you going to do? The next question. Hey, just curious. Would you be open to possibly talking about what it was like to write COVT and any future aspirations you have with that universe? Um, the thing is, and they discuss well, that uh, the ending to 12th grade kills was very open-ended. Um, what it was like to write the Chronicles of Vladimir Todd. It was amazing. It was amazing in a way that I have only experienced recently the the book that I have coming out fall 2020. I really felt that same kind of feeling as when I was writing Vlad. Uh, I felt like I was writing for myself, telling myself a story, really sitting down with a character and just getting to know them. And I really felt deeply, deeply invested, just enveloped by Alicia. And I loved that feeling. I've struggled with finding that feeling after Vlad, and with my next book, I've found that feeling again. So I'm excited about it, and I know I've been talking about it a lot to you guys without telling you really anything, but I can't, otherwise I totally would. But yeah, writing Vlad was very personal. You know, I wrote Vlad honestly because I had a lot of issues to deal with. I tend to write my books, whether or not I realize that I tend to write my books to deal with things that I've been going through and to kind of get it out on the page, you know, vomit up those feelings and, and deal with them. 
So I wrote Vlad because I was still bothered by the fact that I was bullied when I was a kid. It was terrible to be bullied. And then I found a friend in Vlad and we talked about it. And you know what? Turns out my childhood was pretty bad. His worse, definitely. As for whether or not I will delve back into that universe, I would love to. To be completely frank, if a publisher would be open to it, I would absolutely dive back into Alicia, just wholeheartedly, because I love Vlad. Next question. How did you find out about the LGBT community? It's kind of a tricky question, because I guess if you're part of the community, you've kind of always known about the community, I mean, in my experience. But I guess my first big foray into it was about, I think, 19 years ago when I lived in Nebraska. My husband was stationed there at the Air Force Base, and we had decided, hey, let's go to this Pride Fest. That looks amazing. And we went, and it was amazing. There was such a, a feeling of, of acceptance and love, and it was wonderful. So that was probably my first big uh, immersion into the community itself. So yeah, it was it was wonderful. And if you have not yet been to a Pride, I definitely recommend it. Even if you're not part of the queer community, please go because it's so accepting and it's so fun. And I, I just, I love it. I love Pride. Was Vlad the first book you ever wrote or did you start with something else? The thing is, I don't think that any writer necessarily publishes their first book out the door. I mean, I'm sure there are exceptions to the rule, but none really that I know. So Vlad, of course, was not my first book. I had actually written two books before Vlad, and they were terrible. Oh, they were terrible. They were so terrible. I'm totally embarrassed by them. One was a fantasy that was actually about vampires, but vampires and magic and wizards and sorceresses and stuff like that. And um, it had a lot of purple prose, and it was really way extra. I mean, it was crazy extra. Um, the other one was actually a... These were both adult novels. The other one was actually about a, a man that uh, struggled with a heroin addiction. That one, I, I still I still love both of them. And if I ever got a chance to like revise them and make them gorgeous, I, I totally would. But that's for another day, and they're both adult approaches. So, you know, I kind of like my life in teamwork. The next minion asks, what does your writing process look like? Do you plot, pants it, do you edit as you write, or finish a draft before starting edits? Now, the way that I write now, being next fall, uh, 13 published books out is very different than I wrote in the beginning and in the beginning I swore that I would never write a synopsis that I would never absolutely never do a chapter outline I mean that was terrible it'll suck all the fun and the joy and my creative process away it turns out I was wrong it actually makes things a lot easier <laughs> so now I, I used to I used to pants it and if you don't know the term plot it and pants it if you pants it you basically sit down and fly by the pants of your seat and you just Right. You just spill your guts on the page and, and then you fix it later. And I used to do that, except I've learned that it is much easier as far as edits go and takes a lot less time if you plan it out with an outline and a synopsis and then just kind of fill in the blanks. So now I do it that way. Now I'll sit down and it doesn't have to be really complicated. Basically what I'll do is I'll take and make a, kind of like a little list, like little bullet points and everything and say, okay, in this chapter, here's a sentence or two about what happens. Here's a sentence or two what happens here. And largely the important bullet points that I have is I have to have the beginning, I have to have the end, and then I have to have the high point in the story. If I have those three, I can connect them all together and make a story. So it's really, really important that you do something like that. You kind of map it out so that you have a guide because as writers, we're artists, we kind of get confused or not confused really. We kind of get lost in thought. And, you know, if there's a Starbucks, we're wandering away. If there's a cat, we're going to go pet it. And it's, it's hard for us sometimes to, to really cement ourselves to the process and really do the work. So definitely don't go off on tangents like I do. And do a chapter outline. And if you don't know how, I mean, Google will help you, but I can always answer more questions about that if you guys are interested. So the final question that I'm going to answer today and of course, if you guys have more questions, just leave them for me in the comments because I am so open to it. You know I am. The next question is, you know what I want to hear in your next vlog when you do one? I really enjoyed listening to how you came up with Vlad's character. Short version, you said, I know what it's like to be unpopular. I know teenagers. I know vampire. Unpopular teenage vampire. And thus Vladimir Todd was born. So we know how he came to be, but his story had still yet to be written. Can you give us details on that or should we avoid spoilers? 
As far as Vlad goes, uh, as soon as I, I realized that I wanted to write this unpopular teenage vampire that had popped into my head, it was almost like we were having a conversation. You know, I, I would hear things in my head, well, I, that sounds crazy, but if you heard the voices, you get it. Um, I would hear things in my head. I would think of things that would just pop in there. There'd be little sentences, conversations, uh, little facts about his life, and I'd scribble them all down. It was like almost getting a phone call that's not quite connecting, so it's really staticky, and you're only getting a few words, and then taking from that and creating whatever the story is they're trying to tell you. That's kind of how it felt, even though it's not that in a literal sense at all. But it was really interesting because I felt for the very first time, so invested in a character, so connected to a character, so involved in his life and rooting for him. And I just felt really attached right from the beginning. His story is, well, another story. The moment I knew that Vlad was a person, I knew his whole story. That's never happened to me before. I saw everything from the very, very beginning with the Halloween party, all the way to the very, very end with Snow's eyes. And I saw certain people die. I saw certain people change their mind about Vlad. I saw a lot of things, but there were a lot more things that I didn't see. However, I saw the general lineup of the entire series and how it would go. Um, little secret, I was actually asked to continue the Vlad series way back in the day. And at the time, I was very married to the idea that it would just be those books, that it would just be five books because I wanted to keep it in school. And unfortunately, at the time, I said no because I really thought that I was doing the right thing. And now looking back, it's been many, many years, but now looking back, I realized that that was a mistake and I should have kept going with Vlad because I have so much more to say. And I didn't think I did at the time, but that's when Slayer Chronicles came together. So... Who knows, maybe we'll get to go back to Alicia together. But then, if Alicia is when vampires are all together, aren't we in Alicia now? Anyway, that's all of our questions for today. Please remember to like, subscribe, please share, and hit that bell for notifications, okay? And whatever you do, leave me more questions because I love answering your questions and I love you guys very, very much. Be good. Be safe. Remember, Pip and Z loves you.